Afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming along to today's session. Um, we've got some protocols up on the, the screen. Hopefully you can see the screen we're presenting at the moment. So if you can't see it, if you please leave and come back in. Uh, and also you can contact um, the live support if there's technical issues. Uh, very warm welcome to you all. Please say hello in the chat pane. We see we've got some colleagues saying hello at the moment. So thank you very much for joining us and I'm sure what is a very busy day for you uh, already. Just a couple of reminders then based on the protocols. Please turn off your microphone when you're not speaking, just prevent any noise interference. Um, be present at the learning space, we'll, we'll do some um, um, inputs and we'll ask you to be using potentially either your device with a QR code uh, scanner, so a mobile phone, or you can open a new tab on your laptop because we'll be doing um, a Mentimeter session as part of the connector. Uh, please feel free to use the chat pane, make active use of that. Uh, say hello, put questions in, uh, you can put resources in the chat pane, we'll be using that during the session. Uh, contact uh, Speakeasy if there's any um, technical issues. If you lose connection, don't panic, just come back and follow the instructions. Feel free to tweet um, using the hashtag uh, SLF online and enjoy the session. Um, and great to see that I've got some colleagues in the, the chat pane who have uh, met us before at Middle Leaders Leading Change, which is great to see you here and uh, feel free to, to comment in the chat pane through the session. Um, so the session we're going to be delivering this afternoon is research into practice. We're going to look at it's an exploration of the key roles of education on middle leadership in Scotland. My name is David Burgess. I'm senior lead specialist with the Education Scotland Professional Learning and Leadership Team, uh, and I've also got my colleague with me, Louise Sanders. Hi, I'm Louise Sanders, and I'm lead specialist in the PLL team as well, and currently working on middle leaders leading change, aspiring to middle leadership and uh, collaborative middle middle leadership as well as um, workforce support. So thank you. Um, so as I say, please feel free to use the chat pane through the, the session. We're going to do a connector using Mentimeter. So if you've got a, a smartphone, if you have that ready, uh, you can either use a QR code scanner within that or open a new tab on your laptop and we'll put the it's menti.com uh, and we'll do a Mentimeter. And uh, for colleagues who've been on some of the programmes before, you will recognise some of the, the input, some of the um, resources we'll be talking about and we're really keen to hear from you as well. If you've got anything you'd like to share, please feel free to share around that. So I'll just take you through the objectives for this afternoon um, and it will be a short session so we're trying to cover a lot so we're going to um, explore the importance of the role of middle leaders and as David said engage with the current research around middle leadership we're going to hear from aspiring and current middle leaders, so um, people who have been um, participants in our programmes, and it's great to see current and previous participants on the call today. We're also going to cover the benefits of, of the research into middle leadership, and at the end we're going to take you through some of our professional learning offer for middle leaders um, if we do run out of time we will sort of give you a link so you can explore that yourselves at the end so we're going to go to a connector uh, and i say that's going to be on mentimeter so um if you go to menti.com if you're on your laptop you can open a new tab in your laptop i uh, go to menti.com and enter the code that you see there 2670 6432 or if you've got a mobile device you can put menti.com in that or you can also use your QR code scanner as well. A couple of questions we're going to start off with. We usually start with a connector just to um, focus on the learning, get an opportunity to share kind of some thoughts and um, share experience and knowledge and then kind of start to move towards that focusing on to what we're going to be looking at in the session. So we'll just give you a bit of time to get on to Menti. I think we've got about 70 people on the call, so we'll just give a minute or two to get on. And Mrs. Doran, great to see you here. Thank you very much. Um, yep, so you'll recognise some of the, the material in here. Uh, there's some relative, some newer bits as, as, as well in terms of connector as well, but you'll recognise the model that we'll be talking about. Uh, and as Louise said, the focus of this really is about people will recognise potentially the model we'll share. And we've done that a few times, we've shared that model, but what we really want to do is focus on, so how is that supporting the work that we're taking forward uh, and supporting our um, participants? Okay, so if you're on um, menti.com, 
there's a code there for you. And if you've got your device, you can use your QR code scanner as well. OK, I see the numbers creeping up now, so just hold off for a second before we move on to the next slide. So welcome if you're just joining us. If you go to menta.com or scan the QR code. OK, so first question. Which picture do you believe best represents the middle leadership? And I'll, uh, the pictures might be quite small, so I will um, describe them just in case people are struggling to see that. Option one is a, a boat out the front with other boats behind. Um, option two is a group of staff working together, handshaking, bit of kind of collaborative work together, uh, working around the table. Uh, option three, a series of cogs, but they're interlinked, so they're not hierarchical in, in their structure. Option four is a lone individual sitting, working, uh, option five is, um, again, similar cogs, but in a, a linear line, um, potentially, you know, so you're looking at it one in one successive order. And option six is uh, two individuals working shoulder to shoulder, potentially helping each other out. So there's your six options. Which picture do you believe best represents middle leadership? When you voted, if you just remember what option it is you've picked, because we're going to ask you to, to make a comment about why you've picked that in the next slide. So if you just remember the, the option and then we'll ask you just for a, a very brief explanation of why did you pick that picture for what reason. So we'll just give a bit of time to see that. So the most popular one coming in there is option three, certainly in terms of the cogs interlinking and the collaborative kind of working around the table is popular as well. I'm actually really glad to see that no one's picked option four yet. I probably shouldn't be saying that, but um, I'm glad to see that that's the case. Doesn't doesn't look a very positive picture number four for me, but that's just me being making a judgment, which I probably shouldn't. However, in saying that, there is no wrong answer to this, because again, this is a snapshot. This is potentially colleagues in the call who are middle leaders who might feel different points one of these pictures at different times of the day. Um, so uh, there is no wrong answer to it. OK, so I think we've got we've got 44 responses in there. OK, so think about your option and then what we're going to ask you to do now is just tell us which picture you selected. So option, which picture was it? And then for what reason did you pick that picture? So option one, leadership and direction of the boat. So, yep, so kind of that um, getting it going, being out the front and, and kind of steering that, that ship. Great. Picture three, should approach and ethos by all members of staff towards success of all stakeholders in the school community. Yep, so all those kind of cogs connecting, shared approach. Everyone has a role to play in making a wheel's turn. Um, didn't pick a picture because too reductive, okay. Uh, option three, everyone's views and opinions lead to strong foundations to build on. Option three, need to interact with other members of staff at various levels and work towards a common goal. Um, COGS, middle leaders work alongside those at all levels of the system. Uh, option two, importance of linking with others. Yeah, great. Option three, important that everyone plays a part to create a shared vision. Option two, build and facilitating leading a collaborative team. There's quite a few option threes talking about that kind of collaboration and playing their parts and shared approach, part of a wider team. Feel option two and three go very closely together. Yeah, so working collaboratively hugely important. However, the interlinked cogs need to work smoothly together to achieve a collective goal. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good point about the interlinked cogs and working smoothly together because that's vital that there's a, a connection and if one's missing, it won't work. I chose image people around the table, light the cogs, and I wanted to include the human aspect. Yeah, great. OK, so the human aspect and discussion, really important in terms of that, in terms of the role. Um, interactions at all levels, joining up colleagues across the school to ensure when it's the big picture. Uh, collaborative work going on in the picture, see effective leadership being collaboration involving all members of the team. Uh, middle picture five, so middle leadership often feels like you're stuck between class teachers and the head teacher. And the research would kind of highlight that in terms of the buffer, the bridge um, as well. 
Um, but collaboration, option two and three, ideal scenario. Option one, currently what a regular experience, many don't feel confident or want to run. Yeah, that's a really good point that um, that's kind of what you want it to be, but sometimes it's it takes time to get to that point as well. And so it's not always going to be that way. So I think it's a really good point. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, Cogs represent what we're doing, still doing the same job as our teachers in the classroom as well, always leading them. Yep, absolutely. So need each other, community of learning, our parts all the system. Um, tend to think of working with PTs around the table in discussion. Yep, absolutely. Um, picture option three, good representation. It's a complex role involving collaboration, but almost everyone in the system. Great. So yeah, thank you very much. These, these are these are great. Um, and so quite a few as we saw in the in the graph kind of picking option three about that kind of connectedness and the, the important bit and um mid, yeah middle leaders the engine room of school improvement yeah absolutely and i think that's really important as well isn't it because the research does highlight that but actually the middle leaders can be the the group of staff who really take those strategic aims and put them into practice uh, in in reality in the classroom okay thank you very much so I suppose our, our last question before we, we stop sharing the, the connector and go back to the research is, why is middle leadership important in Scottish education? Why is it important? If you are having issues with Menti, please feel free to put your answer in the chat pane as well. So if you can't go into Menti, just feel free to pop an answer in the chat pane. That's fine. Um, so leadership at all levels is important. It supports development of all. Decision making at most appropriate level. Yep. Yep. Okay. For the reasons previously articulated, uh, middle leaders can and do typically play a critical part in the learning teaching improvement process in school. Absolutely. Supports leadership being embedded at all levels, empower their staff through effective PRD processes. Yep. Shared understanding, linking leadership at all levels. And that's a really good point, shared understanding. We talk about sometimes that say the same words, but do they always mean the same thing? And that shared understanding is crucial. Link class teacher. Um, level to senior leadership team, supports departmental level on whole, whole school support. Provide a pathway for progression for staff, important to have an interface between SLT and staff, still have the connection to the classroom. Yeah, absolutely. It's that last bit as well, there, isn't it? That, that is still that close connection to the classroom. Um, sometimes can act as a middleman, woman between classroom teacher and SLT. Some staff may be more comfortable challenging you or be challenged by you to drive improvement. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, middle leadership works directly with the pupils as well as guiding teachers and colleagues, empower staff and pupils, absolutely. Um, something to aspire to, fantastic, absolutely. Um, need to be the voice of reality at times, but at the same time supporting and challenging um, to take. I just want to see that bit needs to move forward. Um, as mentioned, it's our job to ensure the aspirations and plans are progressed at classroom and faculty level through support and interpreting plans. Leadership's key for all teachers, so positive role model. Yeah, absolutely. Leadership at all levels, absolutely crucial. And, that, and someone's mentioned the empowerment aspect of it as well. Uh, middle leaders, many middle leaders are in crucial pastor roles, even more important at present. Well, absolutely. Um, those pastor roles are crucial um, in supporting um, COVID response and recovery and supporting young people. Um, Need to have middle leaders take a lead on projects and curricular areas, drive activity, provide coherence at an appropriate level. Absolutely. Um, so I think basically what we're seeing from all of these responses is that they are it's a crucial role within school, is in essence what we're kind of seeing from that. And I think there's been so many comments in there which are similar, the keywords about empowerment, about um the classroom practice element being crucial as well, the closeness to staff and the classroom, the closeness to SLT as well. And so there's so many different aspects to the middle leadership role, um, which 
we'll look at a little bit with the research we've talked about, which you, you may well recognise many of you in the call who are in, um, worked with us before or are currently on programmes, you will recognise the research we're going to be talking about and we just really want to kind of focus in on why that research is important and how we're going to use that to support the work that we're taking forward. So I'm going to stop sharing that mentee now. Thank you very much for that. It's really good to see um, and we'll go back to the presentation. So thanks for all your engagement with that. Some really fantastic comments there, really insightful comments as well. So um, moving on then to the to the research, uh, this quote here that I will read out just in case you can't see the screen. Middle leadership is not simply a teaching role with added responsibilities, but is distinctive, requiring a set of capabilities which teachers need opportunities to develop as they prepare for and move into middle leadership and actually some of the comments that you've you've put into the mentee really sort of resonate with that it does have it is a distinctive role and needs a distinctive set of capabilities so and as we've said you know this research is is so important in helping us to understand the roles of middle leadership and moving on then to the the refreshed standards for middle leadership. These were um, re-released about a month ago. So um, if you haven't um, engaged with the, the refresh standards, we'll pop a link in the chat pane just so you've got a, a link to those. And again, I'll read this out for you. In taking their particular areas of responsibility forward, middle leaders will work and contribute to the school improvement agenda, particularly in building a culture of high quality learning and teaching and inclusive practice while also contributing to the development of colleagues more generally across their school and learning community. So there's a lot in there, but you can see that that distinctive role of the middle leader coming through and that con contribution to the development of, of colleagues um, and out with the school as well. So we're talking about, you know, looking inwards to the school, but also the learning community and even wider as well. So we're going to to move on to um, John De Noble's research and for people on the call who have participated on our programmes, this should be quite familiar to you by now. So I'm not going to go through it in great detail, but just um, a reminder for those of you who are familiar and just I'll go through it if you haven't seen this before. So. Um, this research was carried out by John De Noble at Macquarie University in Australia in 2018. And he recognised that there actually wasn't that much research. There's a lot of leadership research, but not specifically into the roles of middle leadership. So he recognised that the influences on or the inputs to middle leadership were, as it's listed down the left hand side, principal support. But so for that, read head teacher support professional development, so the professional learning of the middle leader and the school culture to be a really effective middle leader. You need to have that that school culture that supports you and the enthusiasm and drive. So the middle leader needs to have that sort of energy and enthusiasm and also the knowledge of CPNA, that's curriculum, pedagogy and assessment. So as a middle leader, you really need to have that sound knowledge that you can support others with, but you really need to be able to sort of walk, walk the walk. And it says other there because this is a an, an evolving model. So there's obviously other influences that we can think about that um, influence the role of the middle leader. And then if you look along the middle at the top, there's uh, initials and these are the distinctive roles that John De Noble identified. So SF is student focused, AD is administrative, administrative, OR is organisational, SU is supervisory, SD is staff development and ST is strategic. So as a middle leader, these roles you may actually touch on these roles every day or, you know, depending on the time of year, some years you may actually be working in a more strategic way. Say if you're working on the school improvement plan, other years, other times of year, you may be um, taking part in more administrative or organisational roles. So these roles are separate, but also they're, they're linked. So, for example, you could be 
carrying out an admin role, um, say scrutinising some data, and actually that could lead to a strategic role because you have to make an improvement because you're looking at, at say gaps in 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 that data. So they're interlinked, but it's we found it's really helpful to actually to be able to separate these roles as well and a good base for that self-evaluation of middle leaders. And then the how of middle leadership is really important. You can see underneath the leading teams, managing relationships, managing time, communicating effectively and managing self. And these are the some, some of the comments that you made and, and touched on these as well. And then the output or the impact of the middle leader, you can see down the right hand side, teaching quality, because you're working with with teachers, teacher attitudes. So again, you're you're working with teachers on their professional learning, developing that that culture of learning and on student outcomes. So that impact has to be on student learning and on young people learning. And again, as with the rest of the model, the other part is because this is this is an evolving model. So this model underpins our all of our pro, all of our middle leadership programs, and we actually spoke about this model when it was first launched two years ago at the Scottish Learning Festival. So we've had a lot of people engaging with this model since then, and really being able to talk about the impact that this model is having on their on their middle leadership role. Thanks, Louise. Um, so there's a question in the chat being about uh, the paper if it's free on EBSCO. Unfortunately, not. There's it's a there's a paid uh, there's a pay uh, cost. It's held by Taylor Francis online, um, but there is an earlier version which is available. I think on EBSCO. If not, it's on Core, uh, which if you Google Core, it's a free um, online resource in terms of academic papers. And just uh, Google John Denoble, and you'll get an access to an earlier paper which led to this one um, as well. So this research then, we've, we're going to hear some voices from current and aspiring middle leaders, and these are uh, current and past participants from some of our programmes. Uh, and we asked them two questions. We asked them if they'd be willing to record a, a short video or put a quote in for us. Um, and the questions we asked them uh, were about these, how the research informed your self-valuation and identifying strengths and areas for development. Because one of the activities we carry out is we look at the the model that Louise talked through there. We look at those different roles and we ask um, aspiring and current mid leaders to self evaluate against those roles using a, a coaching wheel. Um, and the other question we asked them was how the research will help me in my role. So uh, we're going to listen to we've got four or five videos and a quote which I'll read out as well. Now the the sound might be quite low if you put your volume up on your laptop your device you should be able to hear that. And wouldn't you believe that this has been running absolutely perfectly all day? Just bear with us while we just check out the sound a minute. Yeah, give me a second because I'm just seeing a slight issue. So I'm just going to stop sharing and start sharing again because it did suggest there was maybe an audio issue. So we'll try again. And let's see. And let me know in the chat pane if you can hear this time. Hi there, my name is Claire McPherson and I'm a principal teacher of English and Modern Languages at St. Lawrence High School in Buckhead, East Renfrewshire, and I'm the the Middle Leaders in Hi 
and change course last session. One of the biggest things I took away from the course was John Bonobo's Middle Leadership and Schools model, which outlines a variety of inputs, roles and outputs a middle leader has in a school. There's no doubt about it that this research helped me in my role, as it allowed me to reflect on my own strengths and areas for development, as well as considering the connectional differences between managing a faculty and leading a faculty. For example, prior to this course, I felt I was strong in terms of administration and staff development, but, but that I needed to develop my strategic role as a middle leader. However, I felt it was really the course's reading that prepared me, um, as it highlighted the potential pitfalls to avoid as a middle leader, and that this increased my confidence as a new leader of a team. I also learned that in order to create sustainable change within the faculty, I had to build capacity and bring the team with me using the distributive leadership model. This highlighted to me the importance of relationships and being an effective middle leader. I mean, having now completed the course, I can clearly see how I've developed and enhanced my role as a strategic middle leader using the research to guide me. And I believe that this was one of the reasons I secured the permanent principal teacher post when it was advertised. So it's clear to me the research that underpins the programme's work is invaluable, and I would highly recommend the middle leader student change course to others. My name is Jill Patterson and I'm the principal teacher at Elphinstone Primary School in East Lothian. John De Noble's research has really informed my self-evaluation because it's allowed me to identify that as a middle leader, I spend the majority of my time and therefore my strengths lie in areas of managerial aspects of my post. So the administration, organisation, student focused aspects, whereas I do not spend enough time on the leadership aspects and that's something that because of this research I've been able to identify I'm going to carve out more time day to day to work on the my supporting staff development and strategic thinking within my post. My name is Jonathan Ty. I am the principal teacher at Small Isles Primary School on the Isle of Jura and I'm answering a question which is how the research will help me in my role and if I was trying to capture that in a 30 second reflection, I would say it's about planning, motivating, and encouraging good practice amongst colleagues. In the first ever interview I had when I was a probationary teacher, I was asked to bring along a item which summarized my approach to education, my educational philosophy, and I brought GLOW because for me, education is something that you're always travelling with or is something that's always travelling alongside you and the day you feel like you know everything there is to know then that's the day when you should walk out of the door. So hopefully the research will help me just understand my role better and make me realise what I can do to help staff, to motivate staff and to model that good practice with staff who I work with in this small rural setting. Hello, I'm Elaine Stevenson and I'm at the start of my journey into middle leadership. A major focus for me is the John De Nobel coaching wheel or wonky wheel, as this clearly shows where my strengths and weaknesses lie in a non-threatening and supportive manner. This can be used as a fantastic reference point to return to and reassess on my leadership journey. Hi everyone, my name is Carrie Ann McCauley. I work at Lock End Community High School in Glasgow. I'm currently the faculty head of Creative Technologies. John De Noble's research into the theor theoretical model of middle leadership in school and the six roles identified enabled me to evaluate my own skills and practices as part of being a faculty head. I was newly appointed, which meant I understood that there would be areas that I would have to develop. I took each of the six roles and inputted them into the coaching wheel layout for my PRG. I then evaluated each of the roles. It became very apparent that I was strong and confident in the supervisory role, as well as the organisational and pupil focus role. However, as a, a newly appointed faculty head, I knew that I would have to work on developing my skills and confidence within the supervisory role and the strategic role. This allowed me last year while completing my Middle Leaders Leading Change uh, course through Education Scotland, it allowed me to put a home in in this focus and ensure that I was providing myself the opportunity to develop and um, evaluate these roles further. I then reviewed myself again at the end of the academic year and I was able to see where and how I'd made progress from which I was able to identify. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Heather Smith, based down in Diffusing Galloway as part of the Peripatetic Inclusion Team. I think this research highlights the importance of that role of middle leadership in facilitating learning and supporting staff and pupils. I do think the role isn't always well understood, particularly in ASL and inclusion, just because there is that huge level of responsibility. I'm in an acting PT role currently, and I think this research really drives forward my practice and improves how we help pupils in achieving their potential. Thanks. Thank you to all the participants uh, who submitted those videos and we've got a quote here which I'll read out uh, as well and this is from Lisa Lament who's English teacher at Portree High School in the Isle of Skye. She says, I found the research of John De Noble in defining the roles of a middle leader extremely helpful in informing my self-evaluation. Throughout my teaching career I've looked on in awe as principal teachers and faculty heads kept their, keep their many plates spinning whilst never quite being able to clearly identify all they were doing. Using De Noble's research to identify and classify these various plates has been very helpful, allowing me to recognise which aspects of middle leadership I feel well equipped for and to identify those which I need to develop. I feel confident when it comes to administrative and organisational aspects of middle management, but would like to develop my confidence and skills in delivering the supervisory and strategic roles that are required. I'm now looking forward to furthering my research and professional development using the resources highlighted by Education Scotland during the introductory session to their aspiring to middle leadership course. Thanks, David. So hopefully that's give you, given you some idea of how the research is already impacting on middle leaders and aspiring middle leaders. So we're just going to open it up really uh, by asking you this question and um, feel free to just pop your um, your thoughts in the chat pane. So how does the research benefit middle leadership in the Scottish education system? So based on what you've heard today and what you already know, just have a little thought and just pop any any comments in the chat pane. And if anybody wants to pop their hand up and, and share their thoughts, we've got a few minutes before we need to, to move on. So it'd be great to hear from you. And thanks, Katie, for your comments. They were inspiring and encouraging, definitely um, very positive. And it's great to see that that research into into action. And just one one other um, comment I'll make about the the John De Noble model. He um, he also asked lots of middle leaders in Scotland. So was, um, he developed the research further by um, asking uh, middle leaders in Scotland the roles that they carried out most and they felt were most important. And actually, he came up with the seventh role, and that was working with with parents, with partners, and with the community. So so. As I said, you know, that model is evolving and certainly um, we found in Scotland there was a, an extra role there. So thanks, Greg. Improvements in self-evaluation seem to be apparent. Absolutely. So this model, along with the, the standards for middle leadership, um, has been used widely now by middle leaders in identifying, you know, what their what they're really strong at and what they perhaps need to develop and actually to look at uh, at developing, um, you know, two or three of those areas. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a good point, Jane. So do the coaching wheel with with a mentor, or critical friend, and um, it's good to have that sort of conversation around that that self evaluation as well. Yeah, and I think Gillian's comment there as well is important about. I think what the feedback so far about the model is it helps us. Katie's just put in the chat pane, it allows people to break it down a bit more. So chunking it down to really look at those different areas and identify, so where, where are my strengths? What do I need to work, work on and look at? Because that model highlights the complexities of the role, which could be different for different people in the same school even. So um, that's really important uh, as well. And that's a good point for Matthew. Um, that uh, there isn't any formal training for the role of a middle leader. And I remember a, a good couple of years now when we were out um, 
running these sessions face to face and we had a, a middle leader say to us that I think she'd been in the in the post about 18 years and she'd never she'd done some leadership programs but never anything specifically for the roles of a middle leader this was the first time in sort of her 18 years as a as a middle leader so um absolutely yeah, and I think that's a good point that you're making, Matthew. And I know that you were on Middle Leaders Leading Change a few years ago. And it is about that, you know, you only get the first chance to make a, a good first impression. And, you know, I think the key aspect of this is, um, and Louise will pick it up with the Aspiring to Middle Leadership Programme, it's about preparing uh, or being as well prepared as possible in terms of taking on that role, have an understanding of it. Um, so you're as prepared as you can be, because, you you know, experience is, is one thing and knowledge absolutely can have knowledge but you, you have to do it to get the experience but I think being as prepared as you can is really important yeah that's a good point for Mrs Aitken as well as by quantifying an almost unquantifiable job so it's not supposed to you know looking at all those roles isn't supposed to sort of overwhelm you but it's supposed to sort of help and being a scaffolding for those coaching conversations really really important yeah um yeah, an operational version of the GTCS standards. We need to share that with uh, with John De Noble. I think that's um, that's a really good comment. Yeah, and Sam, that kind of that thinking time, the chance to step back and think about kind of purpose, because the day to day does take over. So having a chance to step back and say, okay, so where am I and, and what do I need to do? So I think that's really important. Um, that's good. That's great, Lauren, about the Middle Leaders Network. Um, and what we're seeing now is um, on the team spaces for the aspiring and middle leader programmes, um, other networking that's taken place on teams. And um, we'll pick up the cloud of middle leadership. We'll, we'll highlight that just at the end as well. That's a resource which may well be useful for networks. Um, certainly it's something that has been used in schools, um, but it's also a resource that could be used to support networks, uh, access and professional learning resources. That, um, for networks that exist. Um, Matthew, that's great to hear. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And that's the key bit. You know, when Louise and I first went out to look at engaging with middle leaders, the feedback was actually can feel quite isolated, uh, which seems strange because you're in a busy school, lots of other middle leaders, if you're in secondary and, and primary, sometimes isolated because you might be the only middle leader that's in that school, potentially in a formal role. But it is that connection and dialogue that's really important, um, that you feel you've got a connection, you can network with colleagues and um, sharing um, work together is really important. That's a good comment from Sam as well about um, having that thinking time to think about a true purpose because I mean day to day events can take over as well so just putting that time aside just to reflect on these roles is really really helpful. So I think we're just going to pick up in the last seven or eight minutes the professional learning opportunities that we offer within Education Scotland and Louise is going to talk us through the Aspiring to Middle Leadership Programme. Okay, so um, as it says on the slide, it's a national programme designed for aspiring middle leaders. So it's where participants learn about the research around the roles of middle leadership, use this as we've spoken about um, to identify their strengths and areas for development, but also to use the roles to identify which professional learning activity they want to work on, as well as making um, connections and networking with colleagues. Again, a lot of you have picked up in the chat pane how important that is. So the, the programme is actually split into six professional learning activities, so it doesn't have its own programme area, rather you can think about the professional learning activities that you want to work through at your own speed. So um, we would recommend at least two, but some people work their way through all six. Um, and then we have online opportunities to uh, to network and, and share the learning uh, sort of mid programme and have a share the learning at the end of the programme. So you can see here, this is just one of the professional learning activities. You won't be able to read the slide probably, but this is just shows that um, what you will get when you, you when you go into the site and look at the professional learning activities. So this is around the student focused and then those are the the learning outcomes there. So they're all um, linked to the GTCS standards as well. So um, again, that, that helps you with that part of your self-evaluation. 
So that's the Aspiring to Middle Leadership Programme, which, as Louise said, has a PLA linked to each of the, the roles identified by John De Novo in the research. Then we've got the Middle Leaders Leading Change Programme, uh, and again, that's a national programme designed for current middle leaders or those who have a whole school responsibility. We recognise that not everyone's in a formal middle leadership position, but uh, a middle leader could be someone who actually has responsibility whole school, but is not in a formal leadership uh, position within the school. It largely focuses on the staff development and strategic. These are the main areas that this programme picks up. Um, and the programme itself, the objectives are looking at, first of all, self-awareness. Um, so using the the, the uh, model, the John Denoble model, we do activities around that to explore just what we've kind of talked about. So the strengths and areas for development based on those different roles. We explore that in a bit of detail. We'll have a bit of time looking at that. Um, and really encourage that self-reflection and evaluation because we, we firmly believe that uh, that, that self-awareness impacts directly on your own leadership. So you need to know your own strengths areas of development um, to, to support your own leadership. Um, the, the second programme objective is about diversity. So we highlight the understanding of identity, privilege and power. Um, we look at different aspects of diversity within that and also about the importance of diversity within your, your own team. So thinking about um, diversity in terms of cognitive cognitive diversity as well, in terms of the importance of thinking out with um, your own kind of thought process and having other colleagues who, who will challenge that is really important. The, th the third area is about leadership of change. We really focus in on the how of leadership of change. We, will, we spend time looking at different models of, of um, change models. We'll look at the different processes. We'll look at the planning of how you take forward that. And this is alongside the um, middle leaders um, taking forward an area of change in their own context and setting and supporting them throughout that. And coaching as a model of practice is the fourth area which is picked up. And it's about developing that knowledge and skills of coaching practicing that uh, and really developing the awareness of how coaching can support uh, in the role. Uh, so that's a year long programme. Uh, and again, it was delivered face to face, now completely online. Um, this year we've got 500, like 550 participants signed up for this year. Um, and it's a web launch webinar which has taken place. Then there's three online modules which people work through individually in their own time. Uh, we kind of target for uh, module one between be completed by December time, module two between January and April, and module three is the reflective module, and that is tied into the last term, so looking about April to, to June to complete. Um, designed specifically to, to align with the, the terms of, of the school. Um, and we have a two touch point sessions where colleagues come together, go into breakout rooms, have the conversation, have that networking opportunity to make sure that their learning resonates with others or challenges themselves to, to listen to other pe people and see what they've picked up from it. And then we have a share in the learning session at the end of the year. The Collaborative Middle Leadership Programme is a different type of programme that is about a context working together. Um, it's designed to engage in a school, so I'm actually going into Kinnaird Primary School on Thursday to deliver that and then in Inverurie the week after. And the schools can bring together their middle leaders, they can bring the extended leadership team, it could be aspiring, it could be current. It's up to the context to decide who they want to be involved in that programme. Um, there's an engagement session and then from the engagement session, the group of staff identify the workshops that they want to engage in, which they then facilitate themselves. Uh, and there's focus in one half. There's um, It's only split into two because I couldn't fit it onto one slide. So student focused, administrative and organisational, and there are workshops related specifically to those areas. And then there's also supervisory staff development strategic workshops. And again, it's got all different types of workshops and we're looking to expand that. Katie, great to see you, thank you. Uh, looking to expand that further so that we've got a wider variety of workshops as well. And basically, once a school is engaged, they continue to go through that programme. We recommend three workshops a year. They get access to the programme area, they get access to the workshops, the facilitator guide, the presentation, they download that and they deliver it in their own school in their own time. Uh, and it's just an ongoing programme. So that's something we're looking to build up further this year because for obvious reason, reasons, it, it wasn't, we wouldn't push that last year, um, but we'll be continuing to work on that over the course of the year. So I've got 
one minute to talk about professional learning activities. So um, I've spoken about six already, but I would say if you want to um, go and explore these in your own time, there are loads for middle leaders around all sorts of aspects of middle leadership from coaching to, to mentoring uh, to different sorts of uh, professional learning. So you can do those yourself or you can work with a with a little group in school. Um, so I'd encourage you to go in and browse and see what's on on offer. And all that's left for us is thank you very much for coming along to the session. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, a bit of a, a, a ride through middle leadership very quickly, um, but really appreciate you coming along and just drop us an email. I'll put the link in the email the, if you want to get in touch about anything. Uh, please feel free to do so and thank you for coming along today. Thanks very much. Good to see so many of you. Thank you.